Hey there, my name is Robert Newman. I'm the founder of Inbound REM and a 12-year veteran of the real estate marketing industry. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about real estate business names. Okay, this is a very broad topic. And if you look at the screen, you'll see that I've got two of the top uh, articles or search results. At least these are two of the top in 2020 when I, when I did this piece of content. And they're talking about a lot of different things. And so first of all, what I'm going to do is um, there's a vast difference between this video and my advice and what I'm reading on these articles. And I'm going to explain where that difference comes from because um, uh, unlike both of these gentlemen, one who owns a real estate marketing company and the other who is a writer for one of the top uh, real estate blogs uh, in the country. He first used to write for uh, business, fit business something something, and then started another website called The Close, which focuses just on real estate. And these guys both write some amazing content, but it is pretty generic. And the difference between me and them is that um, I, for since 2007, uh, when I was working for a real estate marketing company here in California called Agent Image. And for eight consecutive years, I would talk to um, anywhere from one to six real estate agents or brokers per day. So the questions that come up uh, from active real estate professionals, I have a deep insight for. Four years ago, I started my own company and um, I still have those conversations. Uh, as I'm talking to people about uh, branding and web development, mostly real estate lead generation, but you'd be surprised how often the concept or concept of what should I name my team, my business, does it need to match my domain name? How relevant is it? Just in case I've been calling my business like um, Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, real estate services for the last 20 years. And now I heard somebody in a class that said, I'm supposed to name my business after the name of the area that I service. So what am I supposed to do with michellepfeiffer.com? Am I supposed to throw that away? So I'm going to cover real quickly in broad strokes, all of the advice that I typically give out in relationship to naming a domain, naming your real estate business and naming a real estate team. All right, so if you are so inclined, uh, if you're the taking notes type, this would be a good time to go ahead and pick up a pen, a piece of paper, and uh, get that note taking going. So first and foremost, when it comes to does a real estate name affect digital branding? All right, does it affect SEO? That's where my reputation really comes in. You probably have watched a lot of my other videos and you'll quickly realize that I know a lot more about SEO lead generation than almost anybody that's talking to you via digital methodologies. Um, and so the answer is yes, your name very much affects digital branding and digital SEO. Um, one of my frustrations and the reason I decided to make this my very first content piece for 2020 is I, I happen to review what Tyler Zay said and he's he says that no your your you know his video says that no actually your domain name doesn't really matter and he gives you a half truth a deep respect to the man would love to talk to him and meet him and have a cup of coffee but he's not technically correct domain names are so Google used to reward exact what's called exact match domain names, which is like Dallas real estate. If you had this domain name and not a very good website, you could still count on getting a couple hundred people to your website because they would literally make you number one for the keyword Dallas real estate. They changed that. They made it so that that doesn't work. Okay. But the concept of a domain name as they originally intended, it remains exactly the same as it has since they started Google, which is, Imagine there's a library, okay? And that library has 2 billion books. And you're supposed to be the person that sorts those books and figures out what they're about. Well, what is on the binding of the book, the title of the book, is hugely important. It's supposed to reference the rest of the material in the book. 
So if you're a real estate agent or broker and you've been naming your business after yourself for 30 years, let's call it, um, how would you go about changing that or naming your business? Like, because I know that a lot of people have bought into a piece of advice 20 years ago that says that their real estate name was supposed to be their name and they're now deep into that. And yet you probably have leaped forward just like I did in this video and come to the conclusion that naming your business after your name is going to be really confusing for Google because how are they supposed to know what robertnewman.com is about? Are you super famous? If you Google Robert Newman right now, you're going to get a soap opera star from the guiding light. That's needless to say, that is not what I'm about and that's not what I want my website to be about. And I'm sure that you would discover that you most likely, if you have an even remotely common name, you're going to run into the same trouble. Even if you don't, is your name synonymous with real estate? Probably not. Do you really want it to be? Do you want your name to be on Google forever connected to a business? While the answer might be yes for some of you, many of you wouldn't want that permanent, never to be gotten rid of fame or association with your name because what if you decide to do something different at some point? What if your business grows to the point that you don't want it branded to just your name? What if you want it connected to many other things? So how do you go about that? Well, there's a lot of different ways that you can, that you can do it. And I'm going to list off a couple of common ones and my blog post will cover a lot more detail, a lot of other ideas besides these. So the written content will show you kind of flesh out these concepts that I'm going to, I'm going to give you. So number one, when it comes to real estate, Google is very fond of the concept of uh, like everybody understands this inherently. I think that the world is gone, ha is drifting away from being a, like a wandering gener generality versus a meaningful specific. And what I mean by that is when you're building a website and let's say you're in Los Angeles, which is where I'm at. Um, you want to pick a couple of areas to service, not all of Los Angeles County, which is 150 miles and then traffic could take five hours from end to end to drive it. So it's not practical to service that area as a real estate agent. You probably want to pick a couple of areas. So then let's say that I've been a real estate agent for 20 years and I do pick a couple of areas, but my real estate name business has always been named after myself. How might I change my brand and still maintain the like all of the the branding for the last 20 years and yet still perhaps get a little bit of credit on Google. Well, here's some ideas for you. Um, number one, you could do something like I'm in Van Nuys. You could do Van Nuys Home Guy. You could do uh, Robert the Van Nuys Home Guy, which is too long for a domain name, but still, if you've always branded yourself by your name, um, another way to go would be Michael. Um, uh, Michael Sherman Oaks Homes, okay, or Michael Sherman Oaks Home Search, or Sherry Sh Sherman Oak Home Search. Here's what you want to do. It is better, so, so typically speaking, with domains, shorter is better, and company names as well. You obviously don't necessarily want to name your, your company name, you know, Sherry's Santa Sherman Oaks Home Search, okay? So how do you do two things? digital branding and and print or traditional branding at the same time simultaneously. You would you would do something like this. You would name the company Sherry's Homes and then you would name the domain uh, Sherry Sherman Oaks Home Search. So you always tie the two in together. In other words, your print advertising and your digital advertising should actually match. It's extremely important. It's extremely important for content writing. So circling around to a concept that I mentioned earlier about exact match domain names. Google really just wants there to be something representative on the website in terms of content, like in terms of value to people doing a search. So first, the domain name should be descriptive. Your company name should be descriptive. Like there's nothing to say that, that for instance, um, Sherry's Sherman Oaks Homes. It's not a great real estate company name, but it's not a bad one either. Sherry Sherman Oaks Home or Sherry's Beautiful Sherman Oak Homes, Inc. Okay. That might be 
a business name, and then you do Sherry Sherman Oak Homes as the domain name. It's descriptive, and it still has your name, and you could go from yesteryear's concept to today's. Now, if you're really, really lucky, you don't have to do that. If you're really lucky, you are starting a business and a team, and you're not having to deal with 20 years of advertising that you've already built up, and now you're just dealing with you, and you're getting started. Maybe you've been doing business for five or six years, but you knew always that if you started a business, the business would have to have its own name. So what's the perfect strategy starting from scratch? Something brief and catchy. So one of my favorite sites on the web right now is uh, Conejo Valley Home Guy. Dot com okay has literally so google does still pay attention to the keywords inside the domain it's not like you're going to get exact match domain credit on that tyler was correct however they are still looking at it as a major qual like signal of quality so if you have a descriptive domain name what are you going to find on the website and then you have content on the site a strong bio your strong bio good neighborhood information coming from all the neighborhoods. And let's say the name of the site was Conejo Valley and the areas that you service on the site. So now I'm going to, I'm going to show you what I mean. So look at the screen, Conejo Valley guy. And then you look here, how does, so the name of his company is Michael Rice Real Estate. The name of the domain is Conejo Valley guy. All right. It's the first thing that you see on the website. So his company name is slightly different than the domain name, but, and, and that is also not a bad strategy. Domain and website could be different. And, um, I would prefer for them to be the same. If there was some way to tie the website and, um, so I'll give you another example. So here's a customer of mine. All right. Um, He's the number one agent in Delaware. Okay. And the name of his business is DE Realty Group. So he named the website after the real estate company, but it does have DE in it. And when you get into the site, you quickly realize it's all about Delaware, making the abbreviation somewhat relevant. Realty Group making it kind of apparent that this is a real estate company doing business in this area. He is a broker. He's not an agent. So he has a team. So the, the name is excellent. Okay. It's not like the best domain name all the way around, but since you're doing business in Delaware, you are a team. It's actually a solid domain name because it's descriptive of what you're going to find on the website. Now it takes a while for Google to piece that all together. But once they piece it together, domain names become very important when they understand that the domain name, and here's what I like about this domain name. This is an agent. So ConejoValleyGuy.com definitely implies the singular. You know, or you should know from this domain that number one, you're talking about a Conejo Valley guy. And number two, it's, it's singular. And I don't really like the fact that I think it's a little broad personally. So it's not perfect. Um, I just think it's okay. Um, but once you get in here, you'll quickly discover that all the neighborhoods that he has on the site are talking about are, are talking about the Conejo Valley. And the same thing goes for this. And in each of one of these cases, you're discovering real deep content talking about these neighborhoods, which is where what Tyler Zay should have said, which is as long as you have a lot of content, a lot of really good information, then domain name becomes very important. It's not it's not at all a small quality signal like um this website's called the close you know implying that it's a sales advice website and it is as it relates to real estate that's exactly what you'll find here so um the best domain name just to keep this prevalent is one take a look at your area okay google is still very much interested in areas so that's the number one thing if you know your niche uh, by a county or a city then what you want to do is you definitely want to um, utilize that. Like you want to use like Thousand Oaks gated homes or like you want to take a city name and somehow apply that to the domain. 
And my last little trick here, and this is a big one. Okay. In every single piece of content that I do, I usually include some kind of like expert level hack, you know, and this is my expert level hack for creating business names. So a lot of people don't know this and, and there is a rumor or a legend going around that that Google has has gotten rid of something called a, a domain name age credit. So here's a little known fact about Google. Purchase a new domain, put it online. There is a very real tactic that Google applies called the Google Sandbox. There are ways, there are many ways to get around it, but you must apply one of them, one of the name, one of the ways. So Outer Box Design is just a site that I'm looking at that, that does a short but relevant content piece with a very brief case study on doing a, like taking over a website with a, with an age domain. Honestly, I have found this many, many times inside real estate. Uh, too many to count, actually. Some of the time when people call me and they talk about getting rid of old, old business names or old company names, I have to take a look at how old the domain is because if it's a five or 10 year old domain and even if it's somebody's name, I might very well keep it. So here is a expert level tip for potentially getting a little bit of help in naming your business because you can always, if you choose to, start by thinking digital first which isn't a bad strategy in 2020. So now let's say that you have an area that you want to work and you should at least know a couple of them. You really should. And they should be specific to the area that you're in. So just a place that I was in not so long ago. Let's just do Salem, Oregon. Okay. We're just going to do Salem, Oregon. I'm on a website called expireddomains.net. It will let you do a search for, for expired domains for free. Okay. There's no cost to this. All right, so you go to Salem, Oregon. Now you get all the domains that have hyphens. Now hyphens are not good. We don't want hyphens. So we're gonna take the space out. And we do want a .com. We want what's called a TLD or a top level domain. That's a fancy way of saying there's a certain number of domains, .us, .net. But honestly, skip all of that. Here's what you need to know. People take .coms as the gospel in the digital world. Your email addresses, it all looks unprofessional if you have anything other than a .com. So just worry about .com. And now we're here doing great say, o Salem Oregon Homes for Sale .net. The website was born in 2010 and this ACR here, right here when you click on it, this tells you when the site was last seen. And guess what? We want to try to find a website that's been seen in the last couple of years. So about 2018, 2017, 2018. Why? Because if you do find an expired domain name that kind of matches what you want to do, like buildersalemorgan.com is a great domain name. Not There's no expired date on here, so it's useless for us, but it is a good domain name. So let's just do RE, see if we come up with anything. Real Estate Guide. So this is an excellent one, 21, and I'm doing this all off the top on in this tutorial. I'm not, there's no, I didn't pre-plan this or not, and it's been around since 2019. So guess what? SalemOregonRealEstateGuide.com. Perfect, okay? What would that do for you? That would eliminate probably six months to a year's worth of waiting. There, There is a very, it's hard to say, and it's, it's not quantifiable. But there's definitely some kind of time frame that you would literally lose no matter, like you could hire me and I'm probably one of the country's best real estate SEO guys. I'm certainly the most experienced. Whether or not I'm the best or not, I'm, I've definitely got more experience. I've launched a few hundred, if not a few thousand websites personally, not just like, like as a project lead, I've done that. So I've, I've certainly seen a lot of projects go out and one thing I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt is that there is a significant reduction between SEO results when you have an expired domain than when you don't. Okay. So you might think about looking at something like this, naming your business or your team, like the realist, like Salem, Oregon real estate team wouldn't be such a bad way to go and just name the, the website real estate, Salem, Oregon real estate guide. 
or you could just do um, the Salem, Oregon real estate home team as an example. And then Salem real estate guide.com is really not that big of a stretch because then when the tagline is on the site, it would be Salem, Oregon real estate team, which would be the name of your company. So which would sound real natural and real organic from, from domain name to tagline. And that's what we're aiming for. I know this has been brief and I'm sure I probably raised more questions than I've asked for many of you. So please read the rest of the article. And if for some reason you still have some questions, here's what I'm going to ask of you. I've got a contact form at the bottom of this blog post. Go ahead and reach out to me. I'll give you an hour of my time talking to you about your real estate business name. If I'm not too busy, I'm not making promises, but if I've got the time um, and I take about two or three calls a day, um, I will give you the best advice that I possibly can with any questions I may not have asked um, in this video. Or just read the rest of my article. If you found this video helpful, if there was anything in here that I said that you thought was um, useful, then please do me a favor, thumbs up the video. We take a lot of time and energy producing this content and it's always great to get some input. Plus the thumbs up, help the video rank inside YouTube. And if you found it helpful, other people might as well. Thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it.